<laughs> I thought I had kind of made a mistake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is John Spencer, and I'm pastor of Coastline Calvary Chapel here in Gulf Breeze. And I'm here with my wife, Lynn, and we're going to be doing a little, well, just some conversation about, about marriage. We've been married 42 years. We have three children. We've got 11 grandchildren. So we want to just talk a little bit about marriage and not so much some of the typical ways you look at it, but how you impact one another in life as you walk through marriage. Okay, so Lynn, you and I met um, in Bible college. I was a year or so, I think, ahead of you. Yeah. And you came in, and um, I, I, I wasn't really um, thinking about marriage as much as getting through Bible college. I was sure. a fairly new convert. And so we, we look back now, 42 years um, we went off to school together in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. We, we've had our children, our grandkids, and been at this church for over 37 years. And yeah. I, I do want to bring up that verse from Proverbs. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen one another, or so does a friend sharpen one another. And I think marriage is the tool. The spouse is the tool that sharpens and defines and really, in some ways, is God's greatest way of making you into the person that God wants you to be. So do you feel like it's working? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it is working. Because there are certain things that that are who I am. Right. And certain parts of who you are yeah. that we have chiseled. chiseled back and forth between one another to become, I think, better Christians, sure. better parents. And just um, better people. Better people. Absolutely. Like for instance, um, you're you're very methodical. You're very organized. You're you're kind of like pull out the notepad and this is what's it's on your list. The plan for the day. I'm a little more spontaneous. Yes, you are. And I'm a little more. I think in some ways, um, outgoing with uh, social things mm-hmm. than you are. And so we've helped each other with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You've yeah. helped. I can remember when you came and said to me one time, John. Families take vacations. Right. And you remember that? I do remember that. Because I was like, came from a background where, hey, we live in Florida. We just went to the beach. Right. Where you came from a home where your dad planned out vacations. We had family meetings on Saturday. Yeah. Where we discussed how the day was going to go and how the week was going to go and what our chores were. And yeah. my dad kind of ruled the house and it was a good thing. Yeah. So so we didn't. We didn't have a dad at our house. Right. So we kind of did our own thing. Kids came and went and we brought friends over and it was it was a little more uh, controlled chaos. Sure. And, and so the blending together of that been ha- has thing. been a good thing. But but it's also been a good thing, not just for family, but for uh, building life together. And, and as we as God led us to start a church. Yeah. It's uh, it's been a been a, been a great thing because I know I would get very busy here, right? And we had small children, and you would many times kind of pull me back and say, "John, mm-hmm. you know you've got these three children," and I think one of the greatest things that I learned from you during it was that all these people come and go, and mm. that's been true over the years. <laughs> they <laughs> they come, come and, and go. go, but these three hopefully yeah. will always be in your life. Absolutely. And that's something you kind of drilled into our psyche. Yes. I didn't want my children to grow up with an absentee father Mm -hmm. uh, who was at a meeting every night. Because you kind of grew up that way in some ways. Yeah. My dad traveled Monday through Friday and he came in. um, We dropped him off at the Atlanta airport on Monday morning and picked him up on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't bad. It just was, we knew he was coming home and all that. But I knew that starting the church and I could see very quickly that you could be out every night and up at dawn and home at late and just wanted it to be sort of a normal. So we had our Fridays that were our day off and uh, we had some great aunts that would watch the kids and your mom, she was awesome. And Friday was our date day and we allowed each other to talk 20 minutes about the church or whatever was going right, on right. and then we would do something fun. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we established family night with the yes. kids and date night for us. Sure. 
Um, we wanted the kids to see that marriage was an important thing for us right. and that it wasn't all about them. Right. Because sometimes I think uh, families can become too kid-centered. Sure. And once they grow up and leave, the couple sits there looking at each other. and oh, Kind of like this? Yeah, like, what are we going to do now? <laughs> we don't, our kids aren't here. And, you but know, you know what? We've had a, you know, we did it. We've made some mistakes and we, you know, figured it out. But we obviously have a lot more... Um, highway behind us than we do in front of us and so we've learned a lot by the things that we've done and i think that um our our kids have desired to be married and uh, <laughs> yeah. which is yeah. awesome you yeah. know they, they saw it and saw it was good but you know getting back to just meeting each other you know you have these expectations this guy is gonna make me happy he is mm-hmm. a blonde surfer from florida he is just right. the you know, the answer from heaven. And I think that we do all have expectations when we first get married, but you know, so does God. He's got a bigger plan that he's working on. And we've been able to see him doing that as we've looked back on our lives. And now he has changed me because I live with you and he's changed you because you live with me. Yeah, I, th- I think probably the greatest uh, picture, the closest thing we can get to um that represents God. It's another person. You know, God created us all in his image. Sure, we're all flawed. And, you know, he doesn't say God so loved the sunset that he gave his only begotten son. He says God so loved the world. He loved people. And so God makes people in his own image and he brings them together. Yeah. And and there's something about that you just said that kind of made me think that we do think, well, I'm going to find fulfillment in that person. Right. I'm going to find my joy in that person. And there's a lot of that that happens. There's a lot of... Uh, relational aspects to marriage that bring you comfort and joy and companionship, but you can't find everything in Mm -mm. a person. That's exactly right. I mean, you smother them if you do. And so you have to realize in marriage that this person doesn't replace what I'm truly looking for in the Lord. I can only find that in Him. Right. But this person can help me and balance me out sometimes. But I think sometimes right. the, the big mistake people make in marriage is they think, wow. This guy's going to make me happy. Yeah, this woman's going to fulfill all yes, my dreams. all the expectations. And that's never, ever going to happen with a person because our heart's never well, been designed that Well, it's two flawed people coming together. Yeah. I mean, you have weaknesses and shortcomings. And yeah, not so many, I. but I, I have a few. I mean, I could probably <laughs> list a few, but and obviously oh, yeah. you could for me. But um, that's where God's love and his grace comes into play that... You know, you extend me grace and I extend you grace and then we work it out. Sometimes it takes uh, a couple of tough goes around, but we, we do figure things out and figure out, you know, you please forgive me right. Um, right. and I forgive you, but, you know, I want this to work out and I, I want to, we don't see a back door of getting out of a marriage. We worked on it. Right. You know, th- there's a couple of things that, uh, you know, I, I, I get the opportunity because of being a pastor in a sure. church. I, I counsel people. I do their weddings. I do premarital, postmarital. Right. And, and there's a lot of times that, um, you know, people enter into marriage with these kind of ideas. Right. Oh, you know, we found each other. This is perfect. We're not like anybody else. We're not like that couple or that or my parents or whatever it might right. be. And then they get into the routine of marriage, yeah. which can be very routine. I mean, you get in there and there's, you know, there's dishes, there's laundry, there's kids, there's sure. cars, there's bills, there's all those there's kinds life. of things. Life happens. There's life. And it can become something you thought, wow, I thought marriage was going to be different than this. Right. So you have to, I, I tell people that you have to realize that there's no such thing as a perfect marriage, but there can be a good marriage. But it takes a lot of work. Well, you have to work on your marriage. If you were to just to throw a seed in the ground and walk away and expect it to be a beautiful garden in three months, yeah. it's not going to be there. Um, if you neglect your marriage and the, the things that are important to you in your marriage, then you'll look up one day and it will be nothing there. Right. It's like a car. If you don't yeah. maintain it, it breaks down on the side sure. of the road. And a marriage breaks down even And I think you learn that by realizing, hey, we need to we need to have date night. We need right. to still laugh at things and laugh at each other and not take each other so seriously and right. not have all these weird expectations. And I think we, you know, you duke it out and figure it out. But um, yeah, sense of humor helps a lot. I, yeah. I think don't take life so seriously. Right. I, I know for us that, and I share this with a lot of people, 
that there's certain things that make for a good marriage. Mm -hmm. One is a, a spiritual life. Yes. One is finances, figuring that out together. Hopefully you're on the same page. One is family. Right. And, you know, you just have to, you have to come to grips with some of those things, faith and finances and family and fidelity. That's right, a big one. Right. And, and, I, and I think, you know, with, with family, you have to realize once you, you know, leave your father and mother and you cleave to one another, become one flesh, so to speak, that you have to sometimes set boundaries for the larger family on the outside. Well, you know, we, like for instance, we were married for um, maybe only nine months before we went inland, as you call it. <laughs> we went to Kansas City, Missouri, where we both finished our degrees. And that was probably the best thing for our marriage to kind of just get away from the surf, get away from each other's families and go to Kansas City, Missouri. And that was uh, a lonely time at times, but also it was a great growing time for us. And we had a lot of good times together, a lot of great well, memories. Yeah, because I grew up here in Gulf Breeze, Pensacola, and I had a large extended family. Right. And um, they had certain expectations. My mom was a very strong sure. person. And she expected us to be at all these family things. And, and they were great. And they were good. But there were a time I can remember when you and I sat down in my office with my mom. Sure, trying to. And I had to tell her, Mom, I'm married. I have kids. And there's certain things I can't just drop and right. come immediately. I pastor a church. And, and you know, there's. I think there has to be for every couple, uh, if, if family becomes a problem, you've got to have that talk and... I think you also need to realize, and this is what I tell young couples, don't go to your family members for marriage counseling because blood is thicker than water, so to speak, and they'll always take your side. Like if I were to go to, say, my mom and or my dad when, when I was newly married. Sure. And say, here's what Lynn did. Here's what Lynn did. Here's what Lynn did. You I didn't believe what she did. But And just dump all yeah. my dirty laundry sure. on them, and then we come and kiss and make up. They're not, well, they're not part of that. They're not part of that. <laughs> they're stuck with the dirty laundry. And now they're they, still thinking you're a rat. They're still thinking you're a rat. And, <laughs> and so that's why you don't go to family. Right. Find someone objective who's on the side of the well, marriage. Well, that's why those three years in the desert or Kansas City yeah, were, were good for us. So, yeah, it was a good thing for us. But it, was, it was good for us because we had to lean on one another. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, I try to also counsel people to have a uh, a faith when they go into marriage sure. that you know the bible talks about not being unequally yoked and that's pretty commonsensical for a christian but it's another thing to be spiritually compatible sure and I always use this illustration i met my wife lynn here at bible college now and i knew i was probably going to be in the ministry and you, you realize that as well, I yeah, think. Yeah, at the time, I did, we didn't know what that looked no, we like. Know what it I looked remember like. when my dad came down from, they lived in the um, Baltimore area, and my parents came down, and they wanted to meet you. And I said to you, well, John, you know, if my dad doesn't like you, yeah. um, I just don't know. I'm going to have to Well, you said him. if he doesn't approve of you. If he doesn't you, approve of you. Not like. Everybody likes you. Everybody him. likes you. But, and I may have to reconsider, you know, what I'm thinking. That was mind-blower to me. And so we're sitting there, and my dad's just asking you a few things. And uh, you're saying, yeah, I think I want to be a pastor. And, you know, I, we were 19 and 20, 21. And mm -hmm. my mom looked over at me, and she said, Lynn Ann, you don't even play the piano. And I laughed, and I said, I know, but isn't he cute? Yeah. That's how God kind of, you know, we were naive when we got yeah. started. And, but, but we were compatible. Well, we were spiritually compatible sure. because we both had the same, same heart to sense serve. of calling and desire to serve and to follow the Lord. Sure. And I tell people who are thinking about getting married, uh, I couldn't have married someone who said, well, I like to go to church once a month. Sure. Or I don't want to tithe. Or I don't want to go on mission trips. Or, yeah. you know, I don't want to be, you know, that they may be a Christian. Sure. And there's a lot of Christians like that. But they wouldn't be spiritually compatible to someone who wanted to go in the ministry. So right. I, I tell people, hey, you know, make sure you're spiritually compatible, not just, oh, he's a Christian, oh, she's a Christian. Find yourself in places where you agree on those yeah, kinds do, of things. Do you have the same convictions sure. about parenting, uh, about uh, different practices that, that are considered in Scripture, maybe uh, stumbling yeah. blocks for people? You know, do, are you willing to allow your uh are you comfortable with a spouse that's gonna you know 
show up at church once every six right, weeks. Right. Is that that's not spiritually compatible? Well, you know, I think as you if, as a young person, I was in high school and I attended um, a parachurch ministry called Young Life, and there was right. a gal that kind of brought me alongside, and she said, "Lynn, start praying for your spouse, not only for him, but who he is and his salvation and um, his." walk in with God and that when you meet you'll you'll know each other and that's kind of how God did it so I mean God is ultimately in control and I think he leads people whose hearts are wanting to serve him together and you don't lay all those things out ahead of time because you're so naive I guess going into marriage sometimes but you do look for some compatibility things and that's when the iron sharpening iron comes in after the wedding when you realize, oh, she kind of thinks like this, or she kind of thinks like that, but you're right. You and I had a foundation that we built on. Right. We, we both it knew was, we had a sense of calling on our right. life and how we wanted to serve the Lord. And that's what I try to t- tell people when they're there. Oh, well, he's a Christian. The but Bible yeah, just says yeah. be equally yoked. Well, I know he's a Christian, or she's a Christian, but what about these? It's good right. for them to hear each other talk about Oh, it. definitely. But it's I'm so thankful that the Lord leads and guides us sure. if our heart's wanting yeah. to find the right person. Right. And yes, you're absolutely right, those things. And you know, you can pretty much tell if you're looking, unless you've got your blinders on. Right. And you know, you, and you think I, you're going to change that person. Right, that's what a lot of people think. I don't think I've changed you a bit. <laughs> yeah, you have. Have yeah. I? Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. <laughs> That's our whole Do you feel like you're a pretty sharp guy? Um, I don't know. I've been blunted a few times. <laughs> but, but, but it's happening. Sure. And, and I think So that, you're a better man because of me. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? That's what I'm trying to That's what this whole thing's about, right? <laughs> so, so here's what I'm saying. That there are certain things, I think, that couples, before they get married, yes. should at least have their eyes open Absolutely. to. Not like, oh, God's leading. And yeah, he I mean, does, he does lead. But talk about faith, sure. compatibility, spiritual compatibility. Talk about, you know, family. Yeah. Because family, believe it or not, once you, you marry someone, family becomes a big part of the picture. You marry the family. You marry the family no matter what. You marry part of that culture. Right. And you'll be dealing with it the Why rest of Why do you always the, call me a New Yorker? The rest of your do you life. you mean that in derogatory terms? <laughs> Most of the time, yeah. <laughs> There's a difference between Southerners and Northerners. We're, that's not part of our conversation Well, I right just now. was resenting why you no, call me Don't New get York. into all that right now. We're talking about <laughs> the good things in marriage. So I'm there's faith. Yorker. There's faith. There's uh, finances is another thing I tell people to talk right. about. I mean, people go into well, when marriage. Well, you don't ha- have any. Well, we didn't have any. But sometimes people go into it, and all I'm saying is, Get all the cards sure. out on the table. As if you, you have, can. if you have debt, if you have expectations, I mean, whose money is it when you get married? Who's going to make it? Who's going to spend it? Who's going to? That needs to be discussed. I agree. How yeah. much? When? Where? And why? And That's do you have they're... any skeletons in the closet? Like well, debt. Yeah. Like debt. Yeah, yeah, that's a big. You need one. to know. You need to know. You don't want to get married, and the next thing they go, oh, by the way, right? I've got uh, six cars, and they're all. How long did we date before we got married? At least over a year. Did you feel like you checked out all the skeletons and everything? No, uh, I think so. Good. No surprises? I I wasn't as smart back then as I am now. (laughs) (laughs) But that's important. I agree. Yeah. And then then another one might be fidelity. Mm -hmm. And and by that, I would say, you know, you, you need to go through marriage with an understanding with one another. That, that, you're, is, that you're faithful. Absolutely. Like, I've got my phone here. Lynn knows my passwords. She knows the password to my computer. I don't have any hidden secrets. No. I don't have any, you know, same. We, we both have access to the bank accounts. And sure. there, there's no, like, wow, well, where did he, what, this, what is this about? You know, right. th- there's a sense of trust. Absolutely. And f- not only just uh, faithfulness, uh, you know, like, I, I think by now you know after 42 years of marriage, and we speak into each other's lives about the opposite sex and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's important. Like if you see me talking to some woman at church and you're uncomfortable with it, you'll speak up. You'll say, John, who was that woman? Right. And what were you talking to her about? And you might say something like, she gives me a weird vibe. Right. And if I see you talking to some guy or, you know, and I, I go, Lynn, who is that guy? And, you know, he, I think guys know more about guys and girls know more about girls. Right. And spouses should be open. Well, I think we're pretty to allow good them to speak into their lives that sure. way. I mean, I, as a as a pastor or even just as a husband, 
I don't ever go to lunch with a woman by myself. I've never seen alone with her. I don't, yeah. you know, it's just fidelity is a big part of marriage. You don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I've got, every guy can make time. But you gotta, oh, really? But they don't <laughs> if they're practicing good fidelity. Okay. They get in trouble. <laughs> they sure they do. They do. They get in trouble. A lot of gang girls get in trouble, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so marriage, it, it, it encompasses all kinds of things. But it is a tool in God's hand right. to sharpen you, refine you, to make you into the person that God wants you to be. And there's no one closer yeah. and who knows you better after years and decades right. than the person God puts in your life. And that's one of the reasons Absolutely. why I think um, marriage is such an important thing to stay in especially a Christian marriage. Right. What's that expression? It can be the closest thing to heaven on earth or hell yeah, on earth if true. you have a, a bad yeah. marriage. And I think that's probably true. And I think that we've been very blessed that God has given us grace to grace with ourselves, to be patient with one another, and to ultimately realize it's our vertical relationship with him that needs to be right. And then this relationship yeah. has yeah. a better chance of going better. Yeah, someone once said, and I I think this is really true, that a marriage problem is really a spiritual problem, and the bad marriage is just the symptom of the spiritual problem. And I think, like you had said initially when we started out, it sharpens, uh, we sharpen one another, and things that bug me about you are things that bug me about me, that it's a mirror to me, like, you know, I need to be more patient, I need to be more kind, I need to be whatever it is, and I do think that, you know, if if you take your whining and your complaining to God about that person, God will change that person because you never will. Right. And it's yeah. it's definitely a spiritual thing, and he's definitely using it. But um, marriage can be fun, and it can be a great thing. It's not all mundane and working hard. No, it's not. I mean, the blessing that we have of three great, great kids and three great um, in-law kids, you know, two... <laughs> Two daughter-in-laws and a son-in-law that are amazing that we love. And now we've got 11 grandkids, which are the treasure and reward of what we've been doing for all these years. Um, God has been faithful. And it's um, he's definitely yeah. done his so part. We're having VBS here at the church this week and all kinds of kids here. And I'm walking out to get in my car, walking by all these little kids yesterday. And I hear this one kid go, hey, Pop. And I look down, it's little Levi. Oh, and I didn't even know he was here at VBS. I thought he was too young. He was yeah. with a bunch of other little three-year-olds, I guess. And he looks up at me, and I put my hand down, and he gives me this major high five. Nice. Bam. And then he just cruises on. I mean, that's <laughs> that's the blessing right there. I love my grandkids, but, yeah. you know, we had, you know, we've got something to, that we've built on. Well, we had this song in our wedding, and maybe we'll close with this story. Right. Uh, you like this, I love this, this song. old guy, uh, early Jesus movement guy, Paul Clark. And we had this song in our wedding right. called Let Us Climb the Hill Together. And one of the things I've always thought about with marriage is the longer you're together, the higher up the hill you get to climb. Yeah. And you start off down here, you know, like we did. We had nothing. We right. barely could afford anything. And we started climbing this hill. Right. And you get to this one vantage point, and you look back, and you go, wow, look at the view from this perspective. That's a great analogy. Now we're Now we're out of school. And right. And look, we actually have a house. And... And you think, and you got all these memories, mm-hmm. and then you climb a little higher, right? And a little higher. And I think one of the greatest things about marriage and life is the memories, right? And the home and sense of belonging and connection that you build, right? You, you can't get that anywhere else. Yeah, and that just takes time. A lot of people go through multiple marriages for a lot of different reasons: some good, some bad. And I've always looked at that as oh, like you, we climbed this hill together. We look back at all the pitfalls, all the places we fell down, all the places we got back up, all the people that helped us, memory after memory, where some people just kind of helicopter in, and they they get to this place, and they look down, and they no, go... We got they, wounds. They see it. We got war wounds. <laughs> no, they see it from a different perspective. <laughs> sure, sure. It's a lot different to climb a hill than it is to just be dropped down on Absolutely. top of one. But, you know, it's all God's grace. Sure. Oh, and yeah. you'd be open to what he's doing mm-hmm. because it's a choice every day to be a, either a, a blessing or a jerk. 
So, so as we kind of sure. s- start this process of this podcast, oh, Lord. Uh, we're just going to yeah. maybe weekly kind of pick a different theme. The, today's been kind of an introduction to us, our marriage, and, and how we came together and who we are. But we'll talk a lot more about and look stuff at... Stuff of life. Stuff of life and how iron sharpens iron and how God does something amazing with individuals in this thing called marriage. Amen. All right.